All right, everyone. Welcome back from the break. Hope you enjoyed Kadaka. It is certainly a rare treat of a game to see. Uh, we talked a lot during the run itself about kind of how it fits into the old school horror vibe and how different it really was, especially in terms of voice acting. Uh, but that being said, uh, we're definitely going to be hitting a couple of different games going along with that. I guess while we're going into the retro area, we're not quite going into like what you'd probably expect, like the original Resident Evil, the original Silent Hill. But we do have a Resident Evil for you in this case, and it's probably one that you uh, don't know about or maybe aren't familiar about. Uh, that being said, this game uh, can be quite cursed, but it's also quite fun. Uh, we're going to be going into Resident Evil Gaiden with Ms. Scarlet Tanager. Take it away. What you mean by cursed, Act? This game is perfect. I don't know what you're talking about. Hello, everyone. My name is Miss Scarlet Tanager. I am obviously going to be playing Resident Evil Gaiden, which is objectively the best Resident Evil game. I will not be taking questions at this time. So we're going to get straight into it. I will explain as much as I can as we go. But in three, two, one, go. All right, so this is obviously, as you can tell, a Game Boy Color game. And it's from that strange era of um, Game Boy Color game right before they went over to the Game Boy Advance. So it has those really cool looking clear cartridges. So we are playing as Barry Burton. And I believe, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that this is the first actual instance of playable Barry, because I believe you can't play as him at any point in Resident Evil 1. Oh, I didn't get that one, okay. This first zombie can be a pain to uh, juke around. I will explain the battle right after this. All right, we're good. So the battle system is not your classic Resident Evil because they had to um, go through a lot in order to get the sort of Resident Evil feel on the Game Boy Color. This is our first item. And in order to do that, they sort of came up with a, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, like a pseudo RPG style combat in that uh, you have your classic, you know, weapons with ammo and everything, but you use a weird aiming reticle. And depending on the power of the weapon that you're using, it dictates how fast the little aiming reticle goes, which I think is pretty cool. It actually works fairly well. There is one specific problem, though, if you're playing this game casually, that it is extremely easy to soft lock yourself through uh, lack of ammo. Thankfully, there is one thing you will be seeing later on, which in the speedrun setting sort of makes the uh, lack of ammo problem completely mute, mute because we are going to be uh, skipping all but two of the bosses in this game. Yeah, all but two. Ish. Two and a half. All right, so we are currently looking for Leon. Let's see if I can do this now this and wait ah perfect first try okay that is one of the hardest dodges in the game and if you do it perfectly there should be a zombie in that little alcove there but there was not because i am just too good at this game all right so you come over here thank you so we are looking for leon we don't know where he is we lost contact with him and so barry was sent in to try and find him now for the reticle here, white does less damage, blue does the most damage. So you want to try and aim for the blue. All right, Leon, 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 where could he be? And if you're worrying about like the canonicity of this game, don't, this game is entirely non-canon <laughs> due to some uh, very specific things that happen in the ending cutscene, which if I remember, I will point out when we get to that point. Right, let's see if I can dodge this zombie here. And, oh, don't get caught, don't get- oh, Okay. So, it may have looked like I should have gotten caught there. And let's see if I can do the second dodge. I did it. All right. It looked like I should have gotten caught there, but I didn't. Why? Sometimes you spawn a second zombie when you raise your gun to aim at an uh, enemy. However, that spawned in zombie isn't actually a quote-unquote real zombie. So they cannot grab you. Only the zombie that you were aggroed on can grab you. Which we're going to be using quite a few times in this run in order to uh, dodge around some specific zombies. Oh, that's bad luck. Okay, still able to get around her. Hopefully she's not there when we reload the room. Sometimes when you down a zombie, they don't actually permanently go down. We 
which is bad RNG, but what are you gonna do? Marathon run, marathon luck. All right, so we, oh, yep, she is up, darn it, okay. Good thing I picked up extra healing items. So what I did right there is the runaway system. It works just like the aiming reticule, except during the runaway, you can't attack at all. You have, oh, and more bad luck. This is fine though. I've had far worse luck in this game already. So this zombie has not even once. Now, if you look in the bottom right corner of the scene, in that little exclamation mark, that means that one of the zombies has an item. Most of the item pickups you're going to be getting are going to be from zombies in this game. It's where you get a lot of your ammo, a lot of your uh, extra key items, stuff like that. All right. So here we're going to be doing the first zombie-related glitch in the game. So this guy here, let's call him Trevor. We're going to lure Trevor all the way to the other side here because we are going to turn the tyrant into him. Now we do that by triggering this cutscene. Now you can see the tyrant on the right there. If we did it correctly, I might not have done it correctly. Oh, I didn't do it correctly. Okay. So one other thing about Resident Evil Gaiden is that it has an extremely generous a save system. So we went straight back to where I was. Now we're going to go back and grab Trevor again. Oh. Come on, Trevor. So you need to keep the zombie a very specific distance from you. Can't be too close, can't be too far. Alright. Uh, okay, I, might, I think I got this one. There we go. So the tyrant has now become a zombie. And don't worry about that tyrant there. Don't worry about the little girl. She'll be fine with the tyrant as a babysitter. So that is the first tyrant skip. Now we're going to be going up here to grab a key item that we need from this zombie. He's being very helpful and just holding it for us. Except for the fact that he decided he wanted to be a bullet sponge today, apparently. All right, that is an example of a zombie that cannot grab you because he was summoned by the game's uh, very rude RNG summoning system. All right, we have picked up the little girl into our group, which is great. And yes, you can see she's on our party. Her name's Lucia. She's fine. Don't worry about her. It's not like she's infected with anything. I'm sure she's fine. All right, we're going to lure these zombies and get just around them. Cool. Now, the way that you game over in this game is if you get any of your active member, active party members hits, oh, hits zero HP, then you get a game over. But it's only whichever party member is active. So sometimes you can sort of game the system by switching members at the last moment so a hit hits a different party member. All right, you come over here, because we need to get ourselves a lockpick for another door. Hello, zombie friend. All right. We're going to be going a little bit further. Essentially, what we're doing right now is we are at the point where we have Lucia. Cool. Uh, we still haven't found Leon. So the main reason for us being here, uh, excuse you, friend, friend, thank you, is still not found yet. So we're still looking for him. We're pretty much just running around the area, screaming Leon at the top of our lungs. Hello, friend. Oh, you turned around. That's bad, RNG. Come here. Now, at least until later in the game, it is always faster to try and dodge zombies than it is to fight them. At, at some point, we will be getting an extremely overpowered broken weapon that will sort of uh, change that a little bit. But that doesn't happen until about three quarters of the way through the game. Oh no, cutscenes! We don't want those, they're slow. Alright, so we're still looking for Leon, still don't know where he's at. Half 
haven't heard anything, radio silent, but we have a little child with us. For now. Now is this guy gonna cooperate? Oh, he is! Very kind of him. Uh, let's... Okay, cool. Sometimes I don't always make that dodge. It's generally pretty safe dodge, but... Okay. Now we are about to do the first actual tyrant fight. Now this one will not be skipped. It's one of uh, two, I think, two or three. No, three that are not skipped. Now you can see my reticule is going a lot faster, but that's because I'm using the assault rifle now. All right, so sadly, uh, Barry is just as bad of a babysitter as Claire, because guess who got kidnapped in that cutscene I skipped? Yeah, we don't have Lucia anymore. Oh, it's just a zombie party in this hallway. So you're gonna notice some lag in specific rooms. That's consistent. So thankfully it doesn't really affect the run. It's just annoying. All right, guess what? We found Leon. He was in that cutscene I skipped. Don't worry about it. So Leon currently is just baggage in the team. We don't really use him until later. We're still gonna be playing as Barry. So now that little Lucia has been kidnapped, we gotta go find her. So just more trekking around the ship. I didn't even mention that. We are on a cruise liner. It's very Resident Evil Revelations before Revelations. All right, so this zombie up here has a key that we need, but we wanna make sure that we get both of these zombies in the fight. Thankfully, they both go out with one hit. The reason why we wanted to get both in the fight in one fight is... Oh, am I gonna make this dodge? Oh, I didn't make the dodge. Okay. This is bad RNG. Usually the zombie that grabbed me is further down and you're able to get past here without getting in this fight. But sometimes... Sometimes it'd be like that. All right. So the room that we were in earlier where you saw Barry looking at a monitor, we have to go all the way back there. A little bit of a pain. But thankfully it's not mm, too much of a too much of a wisdom tooth to get there. Hello friend, come here please. Now you see me sometimes pulling up the gun. I'm doing that in order to aggro the enemy on me, in order to make it easier to dodge them. I think I gotta do it here to- yep, I do have to do it here. Okay, I'm gonna dodge the zombie in a specific way. Aim once there, aim once there, and free dodge. You gotta aim before you go into the shadow to aggro him the first time in order to chug around him quicker. All right, this door that was locked earlier, we got the key for it. And now we can grab the lounge key which is going to help us get another key. It's This game is essentially a collectathon, a uh, key collectathon, just like the other Resident Evils, except there's not really any puzzles in this game. So it's like a classic Resident Evil without the puzzles. All right. Oh, hello there. Forgot about you. Please don't hit me. I like having full health. Thank you. Now, as you're going on, the game decides it wants to repopulate specific areas with new layouts of zombies. Later on, we're actually going to get to a point where we're going to go through an area that we've been before, but suddenly there's no zombies in it. Now, for some reason, this game only populates the uh, intended path with zombies. So it actually lets you somewhat sequence break, not quite sequence break, but definitely go through areas the game doesn't intend you to go through. Which sadly only helps you once in the speedrun. All right, so this zombie has a key we want, we're taking it. And we're gonna just dodge around this zombie. Hello, friend. Oh, he summoned another friend. That is very rude. We don't like it when zombies summon friends. All right, now this is a very close to, okay, cool. That is a very tight dodge. It is deceptively difficult to get through there without getting into a fight. Okay. Now we are going back towards the monitor room. Come here, friend. Thank you. 
because we need to look at the monitors to figure out where the tyrant took Lucia. Which we have to do a couple times in the game. Did I get the rope? I did. Okay. I have had runs of this where I forgot the item there and it uh, kind of screws me over later. Sadly, this room is now populated with zombies for the rest of the game. It's only really a pain later. Good news, we have discovered where the tyrant took Lucia. Now, the reason why the tyrant took her instead of just getting rid of her is because shock horror, she is in fact infected with a virus. I cannot actually remember what the virus in this game is called. There are so many viruses in, um, in Resident Evil. It's not... Well, it's T-Virus based, just like everything else, but I can't actually remember its designation. Alright, so we have to go all the way to the bow of the ship. Which is gonna take a minute. Alright, so this zombie, we're gonna trick him. She gets stuck on the corner, which is great. And I'm gonna do this here. Yes, it looks dangerous, but all I'm doing is luring that one that was on the left in order to get around her. Oh no, there's a zombie behind me. Thankfully, if you just hold down, you can get through there just fine. Now... <laughs> and... Boom! Okay, this screen here is the save point. Sadly, this game does not have a save system because uh, old Game Boy Color game. So you only have checkpoints, which is also where a little bit of the soft locking comes in. All right, so we got tyrant number two. Hello, friend. I missed. I missed again. Four. Okay, that was enough. Hello, tyrant. You don't want to get caught by him because it pulls you back into the fight, and that's a waste of ammunition. And you only have so much ammunition right now. Thankfully, we picked up the key for this door earlier, so we can very easily get through here. Don't grab me. And look! Color swap! We are now playing as Leon. Barry uh, decided he wanted to go, quote-unquote, check something out and go off on his own, which, if you know Resident Evil, he's totally not going to betray us. Don't worry about it. He's not going to do what he does in every game he's in. I'm pretty sure. But no, now we are just Leon and Lucia. Now we're just going around the bowels of the ship. This is sort of... Oh, wrong button. This is sort of what I meant by doing things out of order. You're not actually meant to be up here yet. There is still zombies down here, but some of the other triggers haven't been activated. Which is helpful. Okay, there's a crowbar we needed. Sadly, this area has a lot of lag, but... And a card we need. Now that's all we need down here. We just have to go back up to the next level again. It's faster to get these now than it is to get them later. Which is why you do it now. There we go. Okay, so to go up twice. <laughs> I always get... No. I always get myself mixed up with the specific elevator because sometimes the uh, pallets in this game can look a bit samey. How dare you slow my game down, zombie? Okay. Ooh, I got the good luck. I Sometimes you can manage to get through there without aggroing that zombie. And it doesn't happen for me very often. Okay, we're gonna slip on by here because Leon needs to make a phone call. And we're gonna pick up key card. Hello, friend! Drag the zombie over here so we can get around him real quick. Game's giving us another save point. We don't wanna save because saving is slow. Oh, that cheeky little zombie almost got me there. Rather rude of him. Alright, so that crowbar we got earlier, now is when we use it. On this specific door here. Because something got set on fire while we weren't looking in the downstairs area, so we need a fire extinguisher for it. 
And now I have to go all the way back down to the bottom level of the ship, which is where we got the blowtorch and the computer card from earlier. One floor down. Because throughout this game, slowly but surely, the ship is sinking and exploding in random locations. So from this point on, random parts of the ship will be on fire. Alright, I've got to equip Leon with the gun because there's going to be a zombie in here that has an item we need. And you can't pick up items from zombies until you down them. There we go. Still got some ammo left, that's good. Uh, excuse you, friend. And there's an example of a zombie that decides they just don't want to stay down. Okay. So, remember how I mentioned we have to go all the way back to that security room with all of those monitors? Yeah. It's time to do that. We're on the literal furthest part of the ship, and we gotta do it again. <laughs> Excuse you, friend. Thank you. All right, so if I remember correctly, I can go through this side door here. I always get mixed up with Leon here. I can never remember. Nope, other door. Okay. If I go through this door, if I go through the next one. Now you can't go through that door because there's fire in the way further up that hall. So you have to go through the front door again. Just like we did in the beginning of the game. Hello, zombie. Bye bye, zombie. Alright, so I think it is here. Yeah, it is here. Okay, this was an example of what I talked about earlier about all of the zombies despawning and parts of the ship that the game does not intend you to necessarily go through. This is the only part of the game where there is absolutely no zombies, and it's only for these specific screens at this specific point in the game. Sadly, zombies will populate this area later. Oop, that is a wall, Leon. Alright, we're gonna take out the zombie because he is just always in my way. And also because he has a health item and safety. In a game like this, when you can soft like yourself relatively easily when you're playing casually, it, you can never not have enough healing items. <laughs> All right, so we found out where Barry is. Because now that we have Lucia and Barry run off, we have now tracked down Barry because the party is just, they just don't want to stay together. <laughs> they just absolutely refuse. All right, now we know where Barry is, so now we have to backtrack all the way to where he's at. And he's not doing anything morally repugnant when he's on his own. Don't worry about it. He's doing something morally repugnant. There's still no zombies in this area, but they will very soon populate this area again. I think there's a- yeah, there's a zombie here. Hi, friend! I'm gonna lure the zombie over here, just so I can get around him. The second I go through this door, hello, zombie friend! Ooh, I got the glitch. <laughs> I made Leon glitch out. All right, barely had enough ammo there. So we're gonna go in here and say hi to Barry. And Barry has betrayed us. Barry has kidnapped Lucia and taken her off at gunpoint onto a submarine. Now we have to go get the absolutely broken gun of awesomeness. However, it requires you going through probably the most painful dodging room in the game. Now we're going to use the express pass that we picked up earlier. Hello, friend. Uh, friend? Okay. Well, I'm going to focus here for a second to try and get this dodge off. See how many tries it takes me. <laughs> Oh, I didn't get it. Okay. That specific dodge is very, very difficult to do. So you have to go up to this corner. Come to the side here. 
I didn't get it again. You have maybe like a two or three pixel space to make this dodge. Okay, I got it. Third time's the charm. So we need to go all the way over here, right to the bow of the ship. And by... Is the bow the front or the back? I can't remember. To pick up this. This is the gas launcher. The gas launcher is absolutely broken. Because for some reason, if you run away when you're using the gas launcher, all of a sudden it gets infinite ammo, but only in the runaway state. Uh, I think bow is the front, by the way. I think stern is the back. Ah, okay, cool. You think I'd know that because I just spent a week and a half on a cruise ship. All right, hello, friend. Goodbye, friend. So now that we have the gas launcher, uh, no zombies can touch us, really. We only have to worry about one... Me oh, I should have gone down one more floor. This was an example of me accidentally getting turned around on this elevator. <laughs> I forgot I had to go down two floors. Okay, well, I'm bring you a little further over just to be safe. Now, even though we have the gas launcher, which essentially makes the rest of the fights in the game negligible, it is still almost universally faster to dodge zombies if you can. All right, now we can go up this hall with Leon. And there's a friend up here. We want to take care of her. Put her to sleep. Give her a little bit of a sleeping gas. She's just napping. Don't worry about it. And this is just another example of the game telling you to go from one end of the ship to the other, because we have to go almost all the way to the stern in order to use that boiler key that I picked up in the same room as the gas launcher. No, this way. One downside of this game is you can really easily get turned around on the ship. Yeah, I'm going the right way. Hello, friend. Oh, I can't dodge you. Sometimes I forget which zombies I can dodge and which are just, you're not gonna be able to dodge them, so you might as well pick them out. This one I should be able to dodge. Usually I dodge him here. I'll bring one more up to be safe. Oh no, he summoned a friend! <laughs> Leave me alone! I hate it when they summon friends. <laughs> Hello, zombie. Are you being rude today? How dare you? Right. Hello, other friend. Now, if you run this game yourself, it, you just have to go by feel on how to dodge the zombies. Ooh, that guy got real close. <laughs> Closer than I meant him to. All right, do I have any healing items for Leon? You do. We'll use it there for safety. Sometimes I can get this guy dodged. Go here. Oh, I actually managed to dodge him. Cool. I only managed to dodge that guy about 50% of the time. Okay, this is going to be another tyrant skip. Coming up here in just a moment. We're going to turn another tyrant into a regular old zombie. Hopefully I get it on the first try. So we're going to take this guy. Lure him over and immediately go to this corner. Now you want to lure him when you're still on those stairs there in order to uh, make it so he hits you at the right moment. Ah, oh, darn it, I didn't get it. Cool, I did it too quickly. That's why the timing is very important because the tyrant has to be late in their uh, trigger animation when the zombie actually reaches you. Which is why timing is extremely important here. Yeah, I got it that time. Cool. Second time's the charm. All right, now is when you hopefully have Barry at high health, because now we're playing as Barry again. Which is why I was very glad, because this is the one of the only boss fights in the game when you can use the gas launcher glitch. playing as Barry and Lucia because shock horror even though Barry absolutely betrayed us earlier he was actually sort of like fake betraying us in order to get uh, information on Umbrella's dastardly activities oh no that's bad that's fine 
It's just one death. Okay, hopefully he behaves this time. There we go. Sometimes if you get extremely unlucky, a zombie can get a bite off right at the beginning of the um, match. That is less than ideal. Thankfully, there happens to be a full heal right there. All right, so the tyrant is just chilling on the submarine because <laughs> the tyrant is still chasing down Lucia. Now we're gonna grab those gas launchers for safety later. I'm just gonna walk around him because tyrants are slow. Thankfully, because if they weren't, this game would be a lot harder than it already is. All right, so we are now back off of the sub because Barry decided to leave the sub and uh, go find Leon. Because again, the party is absolutely incapable of staying together. Now this is going to be another moment where you just have to go from one end of the ship to the other. Hello, friend. Now you see me waiting to dodge the zombies until they've attacked me. And I do that because it puts them in a sort of cooldown state where usually, if you do it correctly, they can't move for a little bit, which gives you the time to uh, dodge around them, which is pretty nice. All right, this dodge coming up here is a little bit tricky. There we go. First time, every time. I usually don't get that dodge. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> okay. Thankfully, we don't have to go all the way to the, um, to the monitor room again. I can, I think you can go to the monitor room to find out where Leon is, but what you actually have to do is just go to where you fought the tyrant because of the cutscene that I skipped after that tyrant fight. Um, you find out Leon blew up part of the ship and it's implied that Leon might have died there. He's not dead. Maybe. Like I said, this game's not canon for a reason. Okay, that's good. Half of the time you end up spawning two or three extra zombies there, which makes you have to go into a fight two or three times in order to get rid of them all. But hopefully I can dodge this guy fairly easily. Come here, please. A little bit further for safety. And... This guy here decided to play nice for once. That was a little bit of, it didn't look risky, but that actually was a little bit risky. About mm, every five or six tries or so on that specific zombie, he catches you if you don't uh, lure him, which I didn't lure him. I just went around him. All right, hello, friend. Oh, and one interesting thing about the gas launcher Actually, I'll explain it after this. Oh, Leon? Leon's- oh no, Leon's a tyrant. Oh, I didn't get the dodge, okay. So you guys get to see a legitimate tyrant fight for once. Thankfully, this should only take two hits. Maybe? Yeah! Yeah, two hits, okay. So you can- oh, I got poisoned at that point. Ugh, that's not good. I'm sure it'll be fine. So yeah, we found Leon. He's totally fine, you guys. Don't worry about it. He didn't get blown up or killed in the cutscene. It's it's fine. This game's totally canon. Okay. So you see the poison status in the bottom right? That is uh less than ideal. I might have to do some shenanigans. Unless I get lucky here. Or I- or, oh, okay, cool. I guess that was a summon zombie. He couldn't grab me. Okay, these two zombies up here, I'm going to go in between them and then enter a fight in order to make sure that they both are in the fight. Now you see Barry is uh, rapidly losing health there. This is fine. Theoretically, we're only going to get into one more important fight. Not just for safety reason. Let's see if I can dodge her. Oh, cool. Now, you see that I'm not poisoned anymore. However, the reason I'm not poisoned anymore is because uh, Barry has no health. <laughs> so once you get down to literally one hit from dead, the poison status goes away. 
Only specific enemies can poison you. So we might have to make an emergency changeover to Leon for the end game if I can't get through the fight easily enough. Hello, friend. Now, believe it or not, we're actually near the end of the game. And possibly the coolest glitch in this game. Hopefully I pull it off because it's also the most difficult glitch to pull off. And it comes in many, many forms. But prepare for the screen to go a little bit wonky if I pull it off correctly. That was a summon zombie. That's why he wasn't able to grab me there. All right, so hold on to your butts. Let's see if I can do this first try. Now you can see that there is a tyrant there. This is fine. So I'm going to reset the game. That is for a reason. I am resetting the zombie that is in the room whose door that I just opened. And the reason that I opened the door is in order to set Barry there. Now I'm going to line up Barry in a very specific spot. Did I get the first try? Oh, I didn't. Okay. So what I'm trying to do there, because there are many, many ways to pull off this glitch, and what I'm going to do is skip both of the last fights, theoretically. And actually, what I'm going to do here for safety reasons, I'm actually going to equip the gas launcher on Leon. Are you gonna... What are you doing, dude? There we go. Now he's being friendly. Please summon the second one. Ah, crimey. I want to show off this glitch, so we're going to restart until I can get it. Ha! I did it. Okay. So we're going to immediately run to the left in order to get that guy to do that. I'm gonna go into the menu just so I can... Oh, okay, we're fine then. I'm gonna wait for safety reasons for that. So what I'm trying to do is get the zombie caught as you are activated on the tyrant. Oh, there we go. All right, so that is the first tyrant skipped. I'm gonna aim the gun there, that second zombie, boom! And time will be at the end of this cutscene. So I just skipped both of the hardest fights in the game right at the end. Now, the reason you're able to skip the second one is because if you do the first part of the glitch correctly, it summons a zombie in the other room, which causes you to get um, the ability to move with your character when you shouldn't be able to. And that is time. GG. So a little bit more of an explanation for that last glitch. Uh, for some reason, if there is a zombie active at that door, then um, that second tyrant fight, you for some reason get access to being able to move Barry during that scene so you can immediately run upwards, which triggers the final um, cutscene, which skips the second fight. Now, if at any point during that glitch, after I did the, um, after I ran into the first tyrant, if at any point I screwed up that glitch, it would have potentially soft locked the game. <laughs> because of how low health Barry was. Thankfully, managed it. Didn't softlock the game. All right, well, GG. Mm -hmm. uh, so, really quick, oh, go ahead. So that is Resident Evil Gaiden. Um, I wish more people could play this game, but sadly it is very expensive and hard to get a copy of it. Um, and just because I forgot to do it earlier, my rabbits, the gray one is uh, Garrus, the white one is Tally, and if you come follow me on Twitch at Miss Scarlet Tanager, they have their own dedicated webcam, and I stream mostly on weekends, though for the next couple weeks it's going to be a little sporadic because I'm moving. But... All right, thank you again very much. Uh, Gaiden is certainly a game. My favorite thing is I like to think this game is canon. You think so? Oh, I forgot to mention that. Um, right at the end there, so because time is at the thank you for playing screen, you have to get through the final cutscene, and the final cutscene is not skippable. There was one slide, you might have seen it, blink if you miss it, where it zooms in on Leon's neck and you see green blood. 
the implication is that Leon died when he blew up the boilers halfway through the game, and he got replaced by a tyrant, because the tyrants in this game can shapeshift into people. So yeah, this this game killed Leon, which is why it's not canon. But, hold on, have you ever, alright, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take a moment here just to say, because I always like putting uh, wild theories, I'm typing it in chat, but, <laughs> alright, do you know anything about the Paul is dead theory from the Beatles? I have heard of it, yes. So long story short, just to summarize really quick, because you have another game to get to. The Beatles had this theory that halfway through their band's lifespan, Paul McCartney died and they replaced him with a new Paul McCartney. The thing is, though, <laughs> new Paul McCartney just went on like nothing was there and made some of the Beatles' greatest songs. And the same thing happened here. Leon died, but then the tyrant was just kind of cool being Leon. So he went to do RE4. Yeah, I would say and that, but there's two very, like, he bleeds red in RE4 and he bleeds red He in drinks R6. red food coloring. He just, <laughs> it just lives off a diet of it. He turns his own blood back red, is what you're saying? Yeah, he also, uh, people can say the Plagas made it red. He doesn't bleed until he has the Plagas, makes it red blood. That's not true, you can bleed before you get the Plagas in 4. Well, you can, but it's not canon, you don't take any damage. Just like how oh. no one ever gets in Resident Evil, see? <laughs> is that how that works? Yeah, yeah, or he drinks red food coloring. By the way, it explains the, the laser room. I didn't want to geek you out there, but... Once again, if anyone wanted to find you, uh, if they could do so at the, uh, Ms. Scarlet Tanager, the link was there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. Uh, anything else you want to say before we go to the last game? Um, my bunnies are adorable. Come follow me if you want to have a dedicated webcam to see them, and to see my chinchillas, Edward and Alphonse. They are also adorable and sometimes make appearances. All right. Well, thank you very much. We do have one more game for you tonight, so don't go anywhere. We will be right back.